Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, streaming live from our studios in Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, I have the honor of introducing to you Courtney Choi, our Miss Hawaii 2021. She just stepped down from a very busy, a very busy year representing Hawaii as the Miss Hawaii 2021 and the organization that uh, supports her in every way. She represented us so well in a most regal way. So welcome, Courtney Choi, Miss Hawaii 2021. Hi, Wendy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm Lots of excitement in your life, right? I mean, just keep it going, girl, because with <laughs> your excitement and, and all your energy that you exude, it's contagious. And I know that because of what you just shared with me, wherever you go, people can feel it and just be that bright light that encourages and mentors so many young women of Hawaii. So let's get started, Courtney. So you're on stage and you hear your name called out as the next Miss Hawaii 2021. What's going on in your head? Wow, I, I think a lot of shock. It was very surreal. A um, lot of ugly crying, you know, our longtime producer, Ray, always tells you, don't ugly cry, hold it together, <laughs> but I couldn't help it, you know, I, because, yeah, as I've shared with you, Wendy, in the past, there was not something I ever dreamed I could do or pictured that I could do, um, and so just to be in that moment was so special. Wow, so that is the first time I heard that term, ugly cry, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So there's a pretty cry and an ugly cry. <laughs> so what is an ugly cry? Your mascara is dripping all over your face. How do you, I could never imagine you having an ugly cry, Courtney. I think I think ugly cry or like uncontrollable cry, like you're just so <laughs> overcome with emotion. I think that's what was going on with me. So you're just you know, wiping away the tears and trying to hold it together. Well, that I think that's the excitement and that's the special uh, tea or nest is that you have an ugly cry because you are so overwhelmed and you know I, I know that you all work so hard so the emotions of it all coming to a head right there on stage your name being called out and like oh my gosh right I mean the so ugly cries are okay I'm gonna I'll talk to Ray about that right <laughs> it's okay if they have ugly cries that means they have good heart and good feelings and uncontrollable so it's okay <laughs> so please share with us a little bit about your reign as Miss Hawaii 2021 during the dark days of the pandemic. Right. Uh, the pandemic was was very challenging. And I think it had I had to reconfigure a lot of what I thought Miss Hawaii was or who she was during the pandemic. I think it provided a lot of introspection and a lot of time to devote myself to service in other ways, whether it was virtually reading to kids, schools weren't open, parades weren't happening. And so I relied on those connections that much more in the, in the classroom and beyond. And it was so nice when I would go away to, um, you know, Connecticut for Miss America and to be that bright light and that sunshine. My Miss America sisters, you know, have dubbed me the sunshine in the group. Um, oh. it's, so, it's so special to to share that with people and so I I was very grateful to have had the opportunity to serve even if it was during the pandemic I know I did see you at some events you know I mean but then you were all masked up right so and you know like like they said you're the ray of sunshine you are that energy that light so how difficult was that having to be behind a mask you know doing these public appearances and not able to let them see that beautiful smile of yours. Oh, it's difficult, right? I mean, you know, students and, and children especially rely so much on that facial expression and interaction you have with them. But I was just grateful when I had in-person appearances to just be there, to connect with them. Because I think, as I realized too, during the pandemic, it was so hard to be a student to virtually go to class and so just to be there I think I I wanted to let them know that it's okay that you're not alone that we're all experiencing the same thing but um to just to just know that they will be okay wow so like you just said you really had to dig within your inner self and your inner being to just present yourself in a very different way because normally it's so easy for you to just walk into the room and light it up with your smile oh. but now your smile is covered so you still need to connect right and so I know that you found that that way, that secret, that you could still connect 
whether it was with the kupuna or the keiki, I know that you still had a major impact in their lives. So good job. And I hope you and no Miss Hawaii ever has to do what you had to put yourself through, but you did a great job. I mean, even just the pageant in itself, right? Weren't you um, at some point masked up as contestants or uh, candidates with each other? Was that uh, up to last year, right? Yes, last year was completely different than how it was this year. We all had to be spaced apart. And, you know, the girls usually rush the Miss Hawaii and, you know, surround her with love. But we weren't able to do that last year. But I think just to have the competition, I had waited about a year and a half to compete last year. And just to be there, just to be in the experience was was special. And so I'm just grateful that we could have a competition. Oh, wow. So I know that the um, the pageant itself is broken up into many different phases. And I know that the talent phase is a major part of your total scores. What did you do for your talent? So I performed a hula awana to a Brothers Casimero song. I've been dancing hula since about the age of five. and um, you know, it was so special for me and such a full circle moment to dance to the Brothers Casimero because I grew up dancing me and my teddy bear or just their, their signature <laughs> songs when I was growing up. And oh. I, I think it, it's just special to, to share something like hula on a stage like Miss Hawaii um, and to bring that to Miss America too, to be a, a, a symbol of hope, a symbol of, of what it means to connect with culture. And um, yeah, so talent is so, so cool and so important. Uh, and I'm sure that um, when you went to the Miss America stage with that beautiful hula of yours and you just graced everyone there, whether they, it was on TV, televised, or in person, and I'm sure they could just feel your love and your aloha through your swaying hips and your beautiful arm hand gestures. I watch you over and again and again, and when they just put you on the spot and throw you on the stage sometimes, you just go out there and you just exude that aloha. Um, and that in the hula and the story that you're trying to share with all of us. So thank you for having such a commitment from the age of five until now and bringing it to stage and sharing it with all of us. We truly appreciated your talent. Yeah. So what was your social impact initiative and why did you choose that? So my social impact initiative was women's empowerment through partnership. It was inspired by my own journey. I was in a girls empowerment course before I entered high school. And before that time, I was really shy, really to myself. I, I didn't really like to speak up. And so that course gave me the confidence to pursue a lot of the goals that I had set out for myself. I wanted to go to um, a private school. I wanted to become student body president. And um, a lot of those things happened for me because of what I was able to manifest in that class. And I want other girls and women to experience that for themselves, to know that they can have the confidence and perseverance to go after their dreams, to never let anything stop them. And um, so I found that a lot this past year. I was with different girls empowerment programs, and I was able to share my message just to never give up and to always believe in yourself um, that you can do anything. Wow. And so, you know, in your everyday life, I have to throw this question in. How important is health and eating? Um, proper nutrition daily. How important is that to you and your daily regime? Oh, that's so important. I wouldn't be able to do all these things, go to law school, be Miss Hawaii if, if health wasn't a part of it. And health is so um, holistic. It's not just what we eat, but who we surround ourselves with, what we are able to, to um, you know, put into our bodies and into our minds. And I think this past year really taught me that to balance my health and to be cognizant, you know, when things are challenging or, or rough, just to take a step back, to breathe, to take care of myself, and then go at it again and, and just keep going. Um, I know that um, a lot of you young ladies do a lot, not just studies and, and, and work and balancing a lot of things, but I know service is so integral to being a title holder. In fact, isn't service one of the four points of the Miss America crown? Yes. I think it is, right? So what kinds of services have you done? Wow, I, I started volunteering when I was really young. I volunteered with all kinds of different programs. I was usher an usher for um, one of the local theaters here. And I've read to students. I've worked with Special Olympics, the Oahu SPCA. I love dogs, as we're going to talk about. Um, and <laughs> service is just something I found when I was in high school. I continued it in college and even through law school. 
And it, it was one of the reasons that drew me to the Miss Hawaii program because there was that emphasis to give back to your community and to think about where you've come from and how you want to contribute. You know, that's so key. Um, was that just something innate in you or did somebody plant the seed for you to be more service-minded or for you to do more because it just looks good? Was it something innate in you or oh, tell me about that? That's, I'm curious. I think because I grew up as an only child, I consider my dog siblings, but I guess human only child, you know, service was my way to connect with people. And a lot of the time high school was, was a little bit challenging for me and it was a difficult time. But when I took myself out of the equation and I focused on other people and helping the community, um, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected, it reminded me to continuously think about other people and, and know that service is um, where my heart was and, and why I wanted to, to be Miss Hawaii. So I think it, it, in ways it was innate, but it's something that you discover too by putting yourself out there, by being in the community and, and realizing those things. Uh, that's, that's brilliant because, you know, a lot of times when I'm working with young ladies, uh, I try to get them at least in, intermedi in the intermediate age range. And at that point, you know, if I talk to them, they have no experience with community service. And mm -hmm. I often encourage them. And it's not just for the pageant world, but it's also for the ones that, you know, for scholarships. And just for their resume that when I'm giving out scholarships, I don't want to see a, 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 a resume that says one year, doing this one year at the Humane Society, one year here. I want to see four or five, six, eight years because I knew that they were in preparation of having a servant's heart from the time they were younger. And it wasn't just uh, in a hidden ulterior motive because they wanted to look good or get that scholarship. So those are the things that I look at. And if I saw your resume, I would probably be blown away with all the amount of service that you provided to your community. So congratulations, Courtney. That's why the judges could see that in your heart and in, in you. Um, and so that's added to your scoring to become our Miss Hawaii 2021. So I have to ask you now, what do you say to the young ladies who only have negative thoughts of the pageant world or entering into a pageant? I, I would love to dispel those negative thoughts and, and know that there's so much to gain and so many things to to remember when you're competing. You know, I got started when I was a second year law student. And I think it's never too late to find opportunities to give back and to discover things about yourself that you never realized were possible. And it took me go going to Miss Chinatown and then to Miss Hawaii to realize that those opportunities are everywhere. And competitions may not be for everyone, but um, they are a great way to discover service and love and aloha in ways that um, you wouldn't experience other ways. Yeah, touche. You said it, you hit it on the nail. And, and so, you know, we're going to use you to continue to grow this opportunity for the young women of Hawaii, because um, yes, there is one winner or uh, one person that receives the crown. But in essence, if there were 18 of you girls, uh, candidates in this uh, pageant, one got the second crown, but the other 17 still became winners because they pushed beyond their everyday boundaries and limits. And they went beyond. And so they all became winners and they all have to receive that, that um, title of empowerment that they believed in themselves to even get themselves on that stage. I mean, that's the hardest part right there, right? To just say, I'm going to do it and, and to do it. So, and then not only that, but you make friends, I mean, lifelong friends, they're your sisterhood. And the sisterhood and finding people who support you in every one way to discover your own empowerment how do how do you find those people, Courtney? I think it's a matter of of really opening yourself up to opportunities. You, you know, competitions are one way. As an only child, I I knew sisterhood was was not something I ever planned for myself. But you know, this photo of of us at Miss America says it all. I mean, we were all just honored to be there to represent the hundredth anniversary class of Miss America. That's mm. huge, and to be there with women that who who inspire me who continuously share that gift in their own communities and states was empowering enough for me. And, and so that's one of the main things I hope, you know, other women can gain from competing is that sisterhood is, is so alive and well. And, um, you know, I'm so grateful for that. Well, uh, you know, I know even in this past Miss Hawaii on TV, I saw they brought out all the sisterhood of the Miss Hawaii girls and it's just powerful to see. And 
you're friends forever. You have this bond, this class, uh, another class, a graduating class, sort of alumni, so to speak. But I just think that's so powerful. But you, you had a, a 49, or is it a 49 or 50 other uh, candidates that you became friends with? So these relationships are so important. Are you still in touch with um, a lot of them or some of them? How does that go for the Miss America system? Right. They, I, yeah, we gain a lot of communication with each other over the past couple of months. A lot of them are, you know, entering the next phase of their lives, whether that's getting married, having new jobs. And I think it's so cool to just support uh, each other in those next endeavors because we are forever connected in this sisterhood, but it forever connects us into where we all go in life, what, no matter where we are. Um, and I think that's really cool and special. And something that I I am so grateful for, and I hope others um, can find that too. Yeah, I mean, I think the special part is you have a friend in every state, <laughs> right? I mean, you can go to any state and say, "Hey, I'm coming," and you know they may make time for you in their busy schedules, but at least you can make that claim is you have a friend in every of the fifty states, yes. right? That's yes, powerful, that's so cool. Not everyone can say that. <laughs> no, not everyone can. And if you went to any one of those 50 states, you would call them. At least you would have a friend in that state. That's, that's powerful in itself. Powerful. So I want to talk about something that not many people may know about you, but you have a love for dogs. Where did that love come from? When, when did it all start? Oh, my love for dogs started way before I was born. My parents had a dog before they had me. I think it was a training ground probably to have a child, but I, yeah, my love for dogs has just grown over time. They've taught me so much about what it means to, to be a good friend, to be loyal, to, to serve with a selfless heart. And, you know, I'm so happy to have had my best friend growing up, Chibi, Koa, Lonnie, we, <laughs> the, name, the list goes on because I just love dogs so much. But they just, they just teach you so much about life and to never give up. And Aww. you know, when, when I had my challenging days, they were there to, to greet me when I came home, to, to mm. greet me as I went off to school for the day. And I think everyone, if they can have a pet in some way, you know, pets are so integral to health as well. They get you outside, you have to go walking, mm -hmm. um, you have to do all those kinds of things. Wow, and, and that's I think, so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so adorable. That was you, You're, that was the little baby with you? Yes, that was. Oh, the, so the, love, the love has been growing from a very early age. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Can you also talk about the health benefits of having a pet? I think there's, there are some studies I think that talk about health benefits. One is the you know cortisol exchange when you look at your pet or when you look them in the eye. That sense of happiness that's in us is triggered, and I've I felt that many times over the ownership I've had of dogs. And I think just to have a friend, you know, health friends contribute so much to our health and our support. And as we were talking about sisterhood, and I think pets are are an extension of that. That you know, there's somebody there supporting you and helping you and pets give you that opportunity to get outside to, to mm -hmm. be a friend to discover things about yourself and, and to um, just, yeah, have a love that is unlike any other. And you know, um, that was so evident in the last two years. Um, the, the price of dogs went through the roof, because because of the pandemic and the isolation that everyone was staying at home and felt they all, I mean, they were going to the Humane Society. Most every dog was adopted out. Every dog that was bred was sold. And it was very difficult. It drove the prices up. So that wasn't a good thing. But everyone needed that love and that affection. And they turned to the, their pets. And so what you just said is so very true that it will help you get through any dark time, which we all experienced in the last years. So Yes, dog owners, touche for you. My daughter is also a dog rescuer, and we just celebrated her fourth uh, birthday from a dog that we she rescued from China. So yeah, so and then she does all of these things with animals, with dogs especially, and just so I understand your passion and the desire. So when I saw that, like you love dogs too, special, very special. But I know that you had a, a puppy and you were raised with dogs all your life. I also know that at a very, very young age, you already knew what you wanted to be. And what was that that you wanted to be? 
share with us? <laughs> wow. I'm not sure I wanted, if I knew exactly I wanted to be a lawyer, but I think <laughs> this, the photo that comes with this, <laughs> right here it is. This photo shows that it's so important to discover those possibilities early on. And I had these aspirations, I guess, at, this is at the Children's Discovery Center, um, to, to know that there's so many thing, possibilities to, to be who you want to be, not just professionally, but personally. And I guess, you know, I wanted to, I was kind of around the law too. My parents both had backgrounds around the law, though not lawyers themselves. And so just those factors combined, I found myself in law school. Um, I didn't have a voice speaking up or growing up. And I wanted to be that voice for other people in the law. And I'm so happy I found that. It took a while, but um, you know, that's that's my message, I guess, is no matter where you start in life, it's never too late to find your passion, to find something that you're um that you want to pursue. Wow. And you know, that picture of you, I mean, that that had to have been a seed planted in your life somewhere along the line, and it just it just stayed in there and it just grew and grew and it's been, it's been blossomed because I know you went to law school and um, I also know that you graduated from law school the day after becoming Miss Hawaii. So what was that semester like for you? That must have been like crazy, girl. How'd you do that? <laughs> that was, it was so crazy. <laughs> I, I sometimes can't believe that I got through that semester because it was it was trying to graduate. It was also trying to compete at Miss Hawaii. But I, I always say this is, I think law school gave me that opportunity to discover parts of myself that I never realized. And so I went to into Miss Hawaii knowing and being prepared to, to share my love and my heart with people, with other people. And that's what you do in the law too, is you're talking to all kinds of people. You represent different um, walks of life. And I think that's, um, it, it has only contributed to my year as Miss Hawaii. And I'm excited to bring being Miss Hawaii into being coming in its journey. Wow. And so may I ask what um, direction of law are you planning to practice? I think that's, that's still being decided upon as I'm preparing for the bar exam. But I think this past year gave me that perspective and that opportunity to discover things about myself I never realized during law school. And so I'm excited for whatever life has in store for me. Life is completely unpredictable, but it's, it's so cool to be on this journey of just learning and discovering things about myself. Wow. So right now you're preparing for the bar. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> and um, when is that supposed to take place that you go for this exam? It's supposed to be next month. And that too, in and of itself is a lot of taking care of yourself and a lot of health benefits that you have to remember eating well, exercising, making sure that you balance time for yourself while also balancing time for studying. And so I'm still trying to find that balance here and there, but um, it's, yeah, I'm hoping it goes well and we shall see what life has in store. Well, I feel you, you've got it under control. I mean, you seem to me, you know, at least what you need to do. And in fact, um, I guess once you execute it in a daily routine, that's when it will all manifest, right? But as long as you know, and you said it right, you're going to take care of you. And that's so key. Because even like for myself, when I was doing life, everyone says, well, Wendy, how can you balance so much and you know, not get burnt out and be? Because I, I, I tell people my little secret is that I did take care of Wendy. Mm -hmm. I took care of Wendy first, and then I was able to take care of the world. And then by that time, I was taking care of me. I, I ate healthy. I did the right thing. I exercise, I serve, and then I take my kids, and then my business, and I had to balance it all. But when Wendy was happy, right, and healthy, I could take on the world. And so when you said, take care of Courtney first, that is key. Even when you have a family and a husband and Kiki, you take care of Courtney, because when Courtney is strong mentally, physically, emotionally, she can take care of everything. And I would say even the world, all right? But if Courtney is not happy or as Courtney is not healthy or emotion, emo, emotionally stable, you're not going to be good for much. So good girl, you got your priorities right. I'm so proud of you. And that's why you are what you are today because you have your priorities right. Your parents have done a great job on you and with you. And, and I met them at the pageant. So kudos to mom and dad for Aww. raising you right. 
and uh, surrounding you with not just mom and dad, but the, the pet, the four-legged family <laughs> that you needed. And it's so critical, so critical, right? Yes. And yes. So, no, I, I credit them so much. I, I wouldn't be where I am today if, if they hadn't provided me those opportunities to discover who I am, to to go and be Miss Hawaii, to have dogs. Um, yeah, and I'm so grateful. Wow. So there I was with you on May 14th, when you gave up that crown to the newly crowned Miss Hawaii 2022, Lauren Teruya. How has life or has life gone back to being regular or are you still on a cloud or how does this happen for when a, a, a young lady has so much excitement and now passes it? But now I guess for you, it feel like you're on a, on a wave, isn't it? Right. I was thinking about this and I think life never truly goes back to normal because I am forever changed from this experience of being Miss Hawaii. But I think that's that's so important to where I want to be. And it's given me so much perspective and opportunities to grow. And so I'm you know, taking time for myself. Like you said, that I have to take care of yourself in order to take care of other people. And I'm just excited to continue just developing where I want to be and where I want to go. And I also have to ask you one more thing. How has the experience of the whole Miss Hawaii pageant, the Miss Chinatown pageant, the whole pageant support system, how has it helped you thus far to become who you are? You know, it's just, there was so much support around you, you know, from entering the Miss Chinatown, the, the Chinese JCs and all the young ladies that were around you to support you and encourage you. And of course, the Rosses and all the Johnnies and everybody there. And then entering there and then going into the Miss Hawaii and then having the Ray Abriganos and, you know, all of them, the John Pujaras and the David Flab, you know, all of them around you, loving you. So now you're like, and they built you up and now you're standing alone. So how has that all helped you up to this point in your life? Oh, I, it's only enriched and, and heightened what I want to do in my life and, and that I always want to continuously find opportunities to give that back because so many people have believed in me and everyone shows that differently. You know, some people all have gifts. We all have a gift to share. And I, I'm hoping that as I go through my life, I find those gifts that I'm able to share with other young women, other people, and to lift them up because I've been so fortunate to have found that in my own journey as Miss Hawaii. Wow. So we're, I mean, I'm part of the organization in a small way, but we're so proud of you and how you represented Hawaii, how you represented the Miss Chinatown organization, the Miss Hawaii and the Miss America organization. And I know that you'll continue to promote and encourage other young women to take um, this opportunity to grow and, and just live the better, the great life of a Miss Hawaii or even a, a candidate of the system. So we've run out of time for today, Courtney. I just want to mahalo to you, Courtney Choi, our Miss Hawaii 2021, for being that perfect representative for all young women of Hawaii to strive for. We'll be back in two weeks on Taking Your Health Back. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I want to say mahalo to you, Courtney, and aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.